happening in New York City. In an age even of uh, computer communication and international communication and the ability to communicate with the people by fax and in all kinds of different ways, it still is important to be somewhere, to be in a place, to see people, to deal with them, and to be face to face with them. And New York City gives you that opportunity. The Rockefeller family understood that and foresaw that New York was the inevitable home for the United Nations, the ge geographical center for the voice of humanity. In a brief video introduced by the United Nations Secretary General, Boutros Boutros Ghali, and containing some exceptional footage, the connection between the United Nations, New York City, and the Rockefeller Foundation is clearly drawn. So if we could play the video, I really would appreciate your watching it. I think you're going to enjoy it very, very much. On the eve of the 50th anniversary of the United Nations, it is important to recognize more than just an event. Arriving at the critical juncture in history, this anniversary holds immense potential for the peoples of the world. To appreciate, preserve, and strengthen the achievements of the United Nations to examine new challenges which require creative action and most importantly to chart a course for the future. In doing this, it is appropriate to reflect and to draw strengths from the early history of the United Nations. The Rockefeller family embodied the idealism of those years. John D. Rockefeller Jr.'s early backing of the League of Nations in the 1920s demonstrated the Rockefeller family's commitment to international peaceful cooperation. Grants promoting investigations into the narcotics trade and the traffic in women and children and his endowment of a League of Nations library were evidence of his moral and financial support. While the League of Nations floundered and ultimately failed, its ideals lived on. As World War II was drawing to a close, a new world organization was conceived, the United Nations. This historic footage shows how the concept became reality. The idea initiated at the famous Yalta Conference in the closing days of World War II was to be followed through to completion by the delegations of some 50 nations, including that of the United States, shown here at a preliminary meeting in Washington. April 25th, 1945, while the war was still raging overseas, the free nations of the world assembled for the first meeting of the historic conference from which was to evolve the final drafting of the charter. The president spoke to the assemblage from a radio microphone in Washington, D.C. The world has experienced a revival of an old faith in the everlasting moral force of justice. At no time in history has there been a more important conference or a more necessary meeting than this one in San Francisco. You members of this conference are to be the architects of a better world. In your hands rests our future. By your labors at this conference, we shall know if suffering humanity is to achieve a just and lasting peace. If we do not want to die together in war, we must learn to live together in peace. On June 25th, 1945, the charter was signed in a formal ceremony by each of the 50 nations present at the conference. Out of the chaos of World War II had come a global brotherhood that carried within its legislative structure the seeds of world peace for the generations to come. Many tasks were set before the young United Nations, including the resettlement of World War II refugees. The drive to secure fundamental human rights. The struggle to limit the growing proliferation of atomic weapons. And the task of finding a permanent home for the organization. The world looked on as a search was initiated. 
arriving in New York to choose United Nations headquarters, delegates from seven nations are welcomed by Grover Whalen. They must choose a site within the New York or Boston areas. The committee calls on President Truman at the White House before proceeding to inspect locations. The eastern United States will soon hold the new capital of the world. Nelson Rockefeller, a former member of the U.S. delegation to San Francisco, was appointed by New York City Mayor O'Dwyer to interest the U.N. in building on the 1939 World's Fairgrounds in Flushing Meadow. When the U.N. rejected this proposal, the Rockefeller family considered offering part of their own estate, Pocantico, and adjoining properties for the headquarters site. No decision had been made when the U.N. convened in the fall of 1946. The Rockefeller family was more concerned than ever with bringing the U.N. to New York City. News accounts from the period convey the atmosphere. As the weary delegates of 54 nations prepare to end their meeting, the world takes stock of recent weeks, highlighted by the beginnings of cooperation. Hopeful signs are the unanimously passed resolution on armaments reduction and atomic control. And there was big news in the last days, as headlines told another story, the gift of a site by John D. Rockefeller, Jr. for a permanent world capital in New York. Quickly accepted, the strip along Manhattan's East River is valued at $8.5 million. An ideal site for skyscraper headquarters, the six-block area extends from 42nd to 48th Street. The Rockefeller family formally presented its gift to the U.N. in March of 1947. The future of this country and the lives of our children and our children's children are interwoven with the success of the United Nations. In it lies the hope of the people of the world. My father considers it a privilege to have had a part in the development of its permanent home. I'm glad to hand you Mr. Lee my father's check. Thank you, Mr. Rockefeller. Mr. Rockefeller, Mayor Blyer, the United Nations extends its sincere thanks to you and to your father for this magnificent uh, gift. We intend to go ahead and create on the Easter in the side a dignified and appropriate headquarters for the United Nations, which will stand for generations to come as a great monument to peace and security. Your family can be proud of its contribution to this cause. Thank you very much. The Rockefeller gift changed the course of history and brought the United Nations to New York City. It is a gift which gave practical and moral support to the young United Nations, thus enabling it to succeed where the League of Nations had failed. It is a gift which furthered the United Nations mission to help save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. And the Rockefeller family's commitment to the United Nations did not end with this exceptional gift. It continues to the present day and it is personified by David Rockefeller, whom we honor for his dedication to democratic principle, for his dedication to development, and for his dedication to international peace.